Remember, which probably says something. 15, 17 years. Oh, something like that. So, yep. <laughs> okay. All right. However, prompt me because I'm zo I'm zooming and I'm recording, yes. but that's the part of it that I'm going to forget about. So, because like I don't think we need to record the whole time everybody's working on a worksheet and stuff like that. So I can pause and then resume. Okay. Point is, I'll have to resume. So, <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Welcome to the library. I heard one person say, I've looked into this room, but I've never been here before. So welcome. Um, my goal today is to help you work smarter, not harder, um, and to not get to the point where you're really frustrated. Um, I hope everybody can hear me through the mask. I hang out regularly with a 94 year old and also somebody who's immunocompromised. So if you can't hear something, please just raise your hand and let me know. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, so how can you get assistance after the class when you're working on something? Be able to find the page we have for all of the class guides, and I've made a class guide for today. Uh, we're going to talk about, and you've already figured out, we're going to talk about scholarly versus non-scholarly literature because you've already got a handout we'll be working on. Um, the point is, we want you to know scholarly literature when you see it, because a lot of your professors are going to ask you to find that and make that distinction about what you can use in your assignments. We're going to get in and we're going to search a database today and talk about some tips how to get better results in the databases. Because in our experience, a lot of people are able to get the, the ones they need for their assignment during this session. So we hope you'll find at least one, if not more, today. So another goal is that you will actually have time to get started working today um, and do your own search. So let's just, I'm gonna do a couple of ads. Well, my first ad is, hey, it's Banned Books Week. That's why I'm wearing this t-shirt. If you haven't seen already, we've got a display up in the, it's called the carousel. It's that weird round thing when you come in this entrance here down from the knee. And it's the top 10 things that were challenged during the last year. And it's, it's an interesting list. So. Um, things that I want to just point out on this homepage. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and open up a browser. And if you're in this building, it should open you up to the WIU libraries page. If not, there's always a link in the WIU top header bar in purple that will bring you here. And this is what we're gonna be concentrating on today is using things on the libraries page. We're gonna go into a guide, but before we get there, I just wanted to point out that this area in the middle, if you're using full screen, obviously on your phone, it looks different because it optimizes for mobile and it moves things around. But if you're looking at it in full screen, most of the resources that you would use for searching are in the tabbed area in the middle. And I'll point that out when we actually go into a database to search. Here is where you can see all the options for getting help. So right now, Michael is down at the reference desk because that's who Dr. Heather talked to. Um, it's the one that's right next to the classroom that you all just tried to go to. Um, and we are there in person from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 to 5 on Friday. And also there's a phone that rings there. Instant messages come there. Text messages come there. We answer them from all directions. And if it's not during our hours, there is an email form so that you can submit. If it's 10 o'clock at night and we're not there anymore, but you want to go ahead and ask a question, at 10 o'clock at night, somebody might see it at home and answer you. If not, whoever sees the first thing the next morning will answer and get back to you. So don't wait until you're frustrated. We are paid to sit there and wait 
for you guys to ask questions. And it's much more interesting if you do. So um, make sure to use that resource. What we're doing today though, if you wanna mouse over where it says instruction and guides on the left sidebar, and then we're gonna to go to class guides. So again, if you mouse over instruction and guides, it makes it really tiny on the screen. You should then be in an alphabetical list of all the the guides that we've made for specific courses in recent years. And you can either choose anthropology, and you're so lucky, anthropology is really close to the top. The last class I taught was sociology, so we had a lot of scrolling to do. Um, and so here's the guide for today, Anthropology 110. Go ahead and click on that. You'll know that you're in the right place. Well, actually, now you can actually see my face. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the assignment. Why are you guys here today? What's the assignment we're working on? Okay, so it's yoga and medicine. Pretty obvious from the picture there. But what is it you need to do for that assignment? Write a paper, okay. And what needs to be included in that paper? Articles, yeah. And also, what else are you doing for this paper that's going to be in integrated into that? I asked you about it earlier. If you'd already done it, yeah. actually doing yoga, right? But what we're doing today then is we are looking for the three articles. You will need to find it and reference at least three articles that relate to what you say in that. And we'll be talking more about how they relate and what makes a good article as we go through the session, but that's why you guys are here today. Um, the first thing really then to talk about is to start talking about this concept of scholarly versus non-scholarly. Um, how many people have already been asked by a professor, you know, I want you to do a paper and X number of sources have to be scholarly or all of you do. So not too many yet. I mean, it's something that you are asked more and more the higher you, you get up in the classes and the further you are along in your degree, you will hear it though, most of you. And you're hearing it in this class right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about different types of resources. So if you wanna click on the second tab, we actually have two examples here. And using these two examples, we're then going to fill out the worksheet, have you work on the worksheet, comparing these two sources and talk about what makes something scholarly, what makes something non-scholarly. Um, for the people that I'm recording this for, I will pause it during the time that we're working on it, but then I'll bring you back on for when we discuss the results of that. So the way to get these examples up on screen is each one of them within the citation below the picture. So it's the cover of the magazine or the journal, whichever it is. There is a link that should take you to a database where we get coverage, where we get access to that. And what I want you to do is I want you to bring up the PDF version. So sometimes databases will give you just a plain text version. I want us to look at the original version of it. So if you wanna go ahead and click on PDF full text, it should open it up in another screen. We'll see if that works for you. And then I'd like you to go back to the guide and do the same for the other so that you can toggle back and forth between those two windows and compare them. So now I'm gonna click on the right-hand one. And again, there's a link to the PDF full text. Ever so slowly, okay. And what is it we're doing with these two articles then? So here's the worksheet. Um, you are gonna look for things like, is the article interesting to look at? And some examples, why or why not? Can you find any ads? Can you tell who's responsible for publishing it? Um, is there a summary at the beginning? Is there any information about the author? And if so, does it tell you what they do for a living? Look at the length of the article. 
footnotes, bibliography. So just go down through these questions. You don't have to write all of the information. Sometimes people get really lengthy. You don't need to repeat all of the information. It's more kind of a yes, no, or just summarize it briefly. And I'm gonna give you guys, um, we'll start with five minutes and I'll check in and see how you're doing. Probably need a little bit longer than that, but please fill out what you can. When you get to the very bottom, you'll notice, I'd like you to then decide based on what you found, which one you think is scholarly and which one you think is non-scholarly. And we'll talk about why. Does that make sense? Yeah? I'm seeing some head shaking, yes. So, all right. So I'm gonna pause the Zoom just briefly here. That's the kind of week it is. Um, I realize also, um, th those of you who are watching the video, the I did fail to say that this worksheet is actually linked on the guide. And hopefully you're all paying more attention than I am and you noticed that it's right there on the bottom of the screen. So you have access to the same worksheet. Hmm. Anyway, so let's talk about what you found out um, in your comparison. So let's just take a poll. So how many people think that the article on the, switch over to the guide again. How many people think that the article from Psychology Today, the one that was on the left side is the scholarly one. Okay, then I guess that means who thinks the one on the right was the scholarly one. Okay, so clean sweep there pretty, pretty much, but let's talk about why. So what are the things that were really easy to tell that were sort of visual cues that made, made you think that it was scholarly? The abstract. It's a very long reference page. Very long reference page. Yeah, and you also found very long. Was it 37 pages or something? Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What about the authors? So what, it, what could you learn about the authors? Okay, yeah. So there were people working at universities or I think in some cases maybe healthcare institutions. What about the other article? Do we know anything about the author? Well, we know one thing, the name. <laughs> so we don't really know um, what this person already would know about yoga, we just know that they wrote something about it and it was published in Psychology Today. Um, so we've talked about the length of the article. We talked, somebody mentioned references. That's a really easy visual cue. If there are no references at all, and somebody's told you to use a scholarly or peer reviewed source, no, <laughs> that's easy to find. What about, what about um, visual interest? What was the difference between them and visual interest? Like which one sort of looked more fun, nicer, more interesting? This one, why? It has color, it has a picture, and it has what else on this page? Babies. Why are the babies there? For Clorox bleach. So we have an ad. Now that's not to say that in a scholarly article, you'll never see ads, but boy, will they look boring. Are you with me? Yeah. Um, because they tend to be ads maybe for another publication that the publisher has brought out, an, a book or um, something like that. You may actually see visual elements in this kind of paper, but they will tend to be Charts, graphs, instruments. So we've got a table. Certainly does not win out against the babies though. We've got a diagram. So, and depending on which um, field you're in, there may actually be some color photos, but uh, they're probably gonna be a color photo of, and it'll say, you know, 
image one or something and it will have a caption and it'll tell you what it has to do. It'll be referred to in the article. It'll be there for the purpose of um, aiding in telling you what's in here. And that's really the most important thing. I mean, why do we care about this? Why is your professor asking you to find scholarly rather than non-scholarly sources? Okay, so the people know what they're talking about, <coughs> as opposed to, what do you think the point of this article is? Just to do like overall Okay, like so, in okay. so it's overall, it's like kind of summarizing or um, news. There's a lot of content that you will see that's more sort of news-based or just common interest. The one thing I want to say is that we're not saying this article is bad. We're actually just saying that it's for a different purpose. So if this one is for maybe even entertaining, you know, sometimes articles are for entertainment purposes, news, whatever, what is the point? I hate the Go What do you think the point is of this article and others like it? Okay. So they're talking to other professionals and they're sharing research. That's the really important thing. And when we're looking for things today, we're going to be looking almost for an even um, smaller subset of things. So what you find today, it has to report original research. And that's what these people are doing. There's a section where they talk about how they did what they did, how they set the study up. That's, you'll be looking for clues like that. Often it will say something like, well, so here's a data analysis section where they explain how they did that. So the word methods probably will show up. Um, they say interventions overall. Yep. So there's a big method section. We're going to be looking for that today. Um, and we'll talk in a little bit when we're in the database doing the search and looking at our results. There are a couple of scholarly peer reviewed type articles that aren't going to work for this assignment. And so we'll talk about how to kind of uh, weed those out as well. But this is the kind of thing you are hoping to find today as opposed to a news item, an entertainment item, something like that. All right. So now that we've talked about the kind of thing um, that you need to find, and you need to find three of them, let's actually go find some. So let me jump back over. You can go ahead and um, close out of the two windows that opened up for the tabs that opened up. So that you're back at the guide. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, I did not stress that. Here's the list. Oh, that's really tiny. If you look at the um, home tab on your um, the guide. I have the ailments listed here. And I can make that bigger on my screen. And if you can't read them, they're on the guide on the home tab. So the guide that we've got that we've been working from. <laughs> yeah. This is important
So I didn't think I heard any back pain. Okay. Thank you for reminding me about that because I meant to point that out earlier. Okay, so on the guide then, and I have it massively large. Don't need my picture that big. Um, I've got a couple of database database tabs. So databases, that's just the a librarian word we use a lot, uh, meaning the tool that you use to find articles. Um, and we, we are going to use one general database that some of you may already have used before called Academic Search Complete. And I talked a little bit about it on this page here, and there's a link to it from um, that box. There are some more specialized databases. I think in most cases, we haven't had to jump over into those specialized databases, but they're here if we need to, if you don't find enough um, in Academic Search Complete. What I'm gonna do is just show you how to get there. So if you can't remember how to get back to this guide, you don't ever have to come back to this guide. You can get to the same database by starting at WIU Libraries homepage. And again, I was talking about the fact that most of the tools that you use for searching are in the middle in these tabs. There is an articles databases tab and academic search complete is like the number one starter database that a lot of people use. And in fact, sometimes they find enough in there and don't have to move on to a specialized database. So we have it right there under popular starting points. This is where all of the different databases are listed A through Z. So if your professor says, oh, you need to use criminal justice abstracts, you could drop that menu down and go to the C's and find it and get into that database. So whether you go from here or you click from the general databases tab, I'd like you to go into academic search complete. So again, it's linked from the guide and I'm gonna get in from our articles databases tab. This is our largest database just because it does a little bit of everything from a lot of different fields. Again, makes it so tiny. I don't know what the res. No, don't want to do that. Or I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. Because of that, um, we need to be, get fairly specific about what we're searching for because there's a lot that we might find. I picked out a different ailment to use as an example in my searches today. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and type my word. So I'm going to do yoga. And you can follow along with me. And I have a friend with fibromyalgia. Why do I always pick examples that are harder to spell? What does that say about me? I don't know. I like being humiliated in front of groups of people. I'm not sure. Um, so yoga and fibromyalgia. Before I hit search though, um, I want to ask if anybody knows why this is here. There's a little box that says and on the second row and the third row. Why is that there? Yeah. Yeah, there are other options, aren't there? So it's set to and as a default. Not would exclude something that, that you put following the word not. Okay. What do and and or do? Which one do you think, if you put an and between two words, which way would you get, would you get more or would you get fewer things than if you used or? So will yoga and fibromyalgia find more for me? Or would yoga or fibromyalgia find more? And will find more? Okay, and I kind of missed the beginning of what you're saying because I think somebody else also was replying. You're saying that or finds you more. Or finds you more, but it's less directly what you want. Exactly. Exactly, and that's why they default to and as the way that the those rows are combined because we want to 
require that it finds both of them. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. Okay. The reason I'm mentioning that is if we can come up with more than one word that means your concept, if you can come up with a synonym for it, or in the past we've run into, um, this isn't on the list of ailments anymore, but we used to have this great big long list of ailments and one was the common cold and people wouldn't find enough until we figured out that actually the database was calling it by its scientific name. Does anybody know the scientific name of the common cold? Because we sure didn't. Rhinitis, like rhino, but rhinitis, clearly related to nose. So the words that you type in may or may not be the best ones. And if you can come up with more than one, I mean, some of you, some of you are choosing anxiety or panic attacks. Is that the way that it's phrased? Those really are different things. And you can use the word or, but it would go here in between words that mean or are standing for the same concept. So as long as you remember to have one concept per row, um, I think I figured out there are also some articles in here that use the word yogic healing. So we could say yoga or yogic. And then what that would do is what? What would that find for us? We'd have two possible results. Mathematically speaking, fibromyalgia and yoga, or fibromyalgia and yoga. It really is like a mathematical um, equation almost. So keep that in mind when you're doing your searching. If you've got one of those where you feel like there's more than one way to say it, I'm just going to stick with this for now. Um, and I'm just going to click on search. And we're going to start to talk about how to narrow down from the first search that you try. I want you to really be paying attention to, well, the language of the article. Because uh, clearly, number one, I'm not going to have much luck with it because it's in Turkish. So and depending on what you're searching on, um, some results pools may have more um, foreign language things. And even if you read the foreign language, the chance that we have access to it is a lot lower. So we'll talk about the language limit. Also, pay attention to the length of the article and actually read the titles and to see how accurate or how close they are to what you're looking for. So for instance, as I scroll down through here, I think, okay, well, they're dealing with pain. Okay, I see the word fibromyalgia. Looking pretty good. But then I hit upon this one and I think, oh, my aching back. That sounds more like a popular thing. And indeed, it's from USA Today magazine. And then this one, oh, I can already tell if it has a color picture as part of it, of, of a person, a portrait, probably not what we want. One of the limits that we have not used yet that we will put on is what this database does for you. And that is it allows you to limit to things that are in peer reviewed journals. So you absolutely wanna have that limit on. So I'm gonna add two limits at this point. I'm gonna put on the peer reviewed limit. It's on the left sidebar if you scroll down a little bit. And once you click on it, it will automatically we had 42 results. I am now down to 32. And if you want to, there is a language limit on the side. In this case, it turns out I only actually have one that's not in English, and it is that Turkish language one that's at the top. But if I want to, I can say, just show me the English language results. And now I'm down to 31. And now we're going to start getting into a little, even a little bit more nitty gritty and talk about um, another way that we can make it even better. So some of you are already starting doing your own searching. Um, 
This next part will help you though. So if you wanna just pay attention to the screen because there's one other thing that we can do to the search that's gonna make it much more focused. So when I look at results, I put two words into my search and it will highlight them in bold. So whatever you type in for your search, it's gonna highlight in bold. And if you pay attention to the results list, number one, I think, well, it doesn't necessarily sound like, I mean, fibromyalgia shows up in the subjects that it's categorized under, but I don't see yoga listed anywhere as the main focus of the article. Same thing with the second one, fibromyalgia is listed as a subject. Finally, when I get to number three, that title sounds like it's the closest to my topic, right? Yoga therapy and fibromyalgia are right there in the title of the article. And you'll notice they're also both listed as subject headings. So if you can find your words listed as subject headings, that's great. They're gonna be much closer to what you want. And there's a way that you can search for that. Right now, we're just looking for the word yoga anywhere. It could be one word at the very end of an article or in a list of references or something like that. Now that I know that those are official terms that are showing up as subjects, I can force it to only show me the articles where the, the main focuses include yoga and fibromyalgia. So I'm gonna make that change. So for those of you who have already started your own search, you can do this as soon as you have seen your term listed as a subject and you know it's an official term because they set all this up ahead of time. So from 31, now I'm down to 15 and every single one of them should have both of my concepts as a main focus. And if you can do the same, they'll be much closer to what you're, what you're looking for. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so the final thing that we want to talk about is just a couple of other types of articles that people run into when they do this assignment. And they are peer reviewed and they are scholarly, but they're not the kind of article that Dr. Heather's wanting you to find. So our sample article that you guys looked at, those people actually set up a study they had a methodology. Uh, they actually did, I can't remember if that was an experiment or if they did whatever. They did their own research on a sample or a group of subjects and reported it back. That's what we're looking for today. That's what you need to find in your articles. Some of these aren't doing that. And some of them are sort of in between and I can't answer whether or not they will be acceptable. Dr. Heather will have to sort of make a ruling on it. So number one is an example. This is a case report on one person. I'm not sure whether or not that would be acceptable to you. And no, the answer is no. Okay. A bigger sample. Okay. So that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. And often you won't necessarily know that until you actually go in and look at it. And we're gonna talk in a little bit, the next thing will be, where are the articles and how do I get them? So we'll talk about that. But I just wanted to point out one that people find a lot. And I notice in my particular pool, thank goodness you guys aren't having to do fibromyalgia because most of them are this type of article. If you see one that says it is a selective review or a systematic review, or a review article, what those people did is they actually looked at all the other things people have done as original research and they summarized them, they review them. So in a sense, their sample is other people's papers they wrote. What you guys need to find is something where the sample is people who actually got treatment. So again, a lot of times you will see the word review in the title up here. This one's pretty easy to find. It even has it as one of the subject headings, but also if you read the, if you read the abstract, which is a summary of the article in there, 
you'll see that there's no methodology listed other than they read a whole bunch of other articles and summarized them. Yeah. And you will also run across um, things in your results list. Again, the limit we did for peer reviewed will limit you down to items that appeared in scholarly journals, but not every single thing that comes out in a scholarly journal is a full peer reviewed article. In fact, sometimes they have news briefs. They actually have little news items in the front. Um, sometimes there are letters to the editor. The journal still peer reviewed. This database does not take it down to the level of the article. <laughs> it's, it's in a peer reviewed journal. So you guys are doing that additional visually, looking through it, making sure it's got the elements that you need. And again, if it's something where you can't quite tell, and there are times where I can't quite tell, there's your final arbiter there, the person giving you your grade. So and let me just say too, yeah. these news briefs and letters to the editor are often useful to jumping off places, yes. right? Because they will kind of like Wikipedia, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, because sometimes in the abstract, it will say this summarizes the article by so and so and so and so. And if it sounds really good, the one they're talking about, we'll see if we can get the one they're talking about. Um, and we'll find that reference. Okay. So make sure you guys have time to do your own searching. So the last thing that I wanted to do in here then is okay, how do we actually find the articles? And some of them, I think it's pretty simple. So what's the most obvious? Have, have you seen ones where we can get the whole article? Anybody? Do you see one in the list where we can actually, where you think we can get the whole article right away? <laughs> Anybody? Okay. Yay, some of them said cleaning up real quick. Right here in this list, I would recommend that you actually, though, click on the title and read the summary, because even then from that page, you also have a link to the full text on the side. But to me, it's easier to read the abstract and determine whether or not it's going to be helpful first. But yeah, so it's quite a few of them. And depending on what your search is, you'll have more or fewer in your results list, but some will have the PDF full text. What do you do if you don't see that link? Um, I picked out some examples because I wanted to sort of show you how else it might work. If you don't see that and you're interested in it now, I couldn't use this. I'm just using this as an example for how to find the full text. But this one obviously is a systematic review. So I would not actually use this for this assignment. But to show you as an example of how it works, you can use this find it at WIU libraries button to look up whether or not we have access in some other database or from another publisher. And you'll get an extra screen that pops up. Oh, okay, we actually get it. It's actually open access. It says most recent one year, not available, uh, but this is from 2013, so I should be fine. And you can click through. Sometimes when you click through, it takes you right to the exact article you need. In this case, it doesn't, but it takes me to the journal. And I did the extra work of searching for the article's title in there and then easily found the full text of it. And there was a PDF for me. So the Find It button is a way that you can link through to content if we don't automatically have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because, uh, it just makes it easier because a PDF is just a copy of the article. And so when you're dealing with 
direct quotes or paraphrases you want to be able to make it as easy as possible. And yeah, that's that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so the last case would be um, if you click on the find it button and we don't have immediate access, what's supposed to happen, um, it'll say sign in. Fingers crossed. In this case, what's supposed to happen is that you get just a link to request an article. Now, for the purposes of this assignment, you shouldn't have to be doing that. I think in general, we've been able to have people find three articles without having to go through this process. So if you see that, or you see the thing that is popping up half the time that shouldn't be that just says no available services for this item, uh, back out and look, at, look for other ones, okay? So that is not a link to the full text, that's a link where you could request a copy and we get another library to send us a scanned copy. It takes a little time. Hopefully um, you're gonna find your three without that, but I just wanted to show you what that looked like. Okay. Sometimes I do a little promo for Zotero, which is a, um, a way that you can grab your citations. We're kind of getting low on time now. So I'd rather have you guys do some searching and then maybe we'll have a chance for a little Zotero demo closer to the end. Um, so if you guys wanna go, some of you I think have already started in and you've already got some results. If you have questions about whether or not one of them will work or what the best word is to search on, um, we'll just come around and see how people are doing. For those of you on the recording, I just showed everybody how to do um, citation information within the database. So if you're in the record for an article you're going to use, there's a cite function on the right hand side. And there's a scrolling bar with options. Chicago author date is the closest to what you are needing to use. So you can just copy that. But make sure you edit it and get the font to match and everything. So we've got just a couple of minutes left. Are there final questions? Okay, so Thursday, comfortable close, meeting in the rec center, Dr. Boyd and Barney. <laughs> Dr. Larry Lynn Garner is going to lead about, about a 60 minute uh, yoga practice for us. Um, please print off those three questions before and after yoga. Bring a pen and paper. Bring that with you. Um, the more detail you record as to how you're feeling physically, emotionally, and, and spiritually, maybe, right? The more you um, you record that before and after, the easier it's going to be to write the paper. And then, um, like I was telling Kate, I had a course degree yet online, but the, the week that I'm gone, you are required to make um, kind of look at the writing center to be able to give them a draft of your paper. You can either do that face to face or online. They will send me a notification that you have met with them. That counts as quiz number six. And then, um, then you just finish the paper up that day. Okay. Questions? I don't get all freaked out about being in the yoga studio because I don't care whether you can touch your toes or not. That's <laughs> the point of it. The point of it is for you to go someplace that might be a little uncomfortable for you and to observe and practice as an adult. Okay. So if Go ahead. So the research we're doing now is it's due next Sunday, not this Sunday. Okay. Yeah. If anybody's still stuck and can't get their three, 
You've got my contact information on here. I'm actually headed down to the reference desk right now to work at the reference desk, but I'd be happy to help people after class or at any later time to find articles if you still need to. And good luck. Yep.